The God of Space Marines. The Emperor of Mankind is truly a colossal figure of power and mystery in the Warhammer 40k universe, and you could say he's quite the central pillar without whom humanity would crumble under its own weight. Hailed across the galaxy as the embodiment of the perfect human, he is a wise leader, a protector of mankind, and a fierce opponent of the forces of chaos and all threats that plague the galaxy. To give you a reference point, one could say that he's the amalgamation of almost all DC and Marvel superheroes. And maybe even that doesn't explain the limits of the feats he can accomplish. However, he's not perfect. His quest for a utopian society built on reason and science, though admirable in its intent, revealed a darker side marked by intolerance and prejudice. In this video, we'll explore everything there is to explore about this uber-powerful being's anatomy, physique, and powers. So without further ado, let's get this ride started. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. I shall keep faith. How exactly was the God Emperor born, and what's up with his soul? Before we get into who and what exactly the God Emperor of Mankind is, we need to understand where he comes from, which universe he's set in, and what his purpose is. So Warhammer 40k is basically a tabletop miniature war game by Games Workshop, but the dystopian world that it's set in has some of the deepest and most elaborate lore as far as games are concerned anyways. In fact, some compare Warhammer's lore with that of Frank Herbert's Dune. Anyway, in Warhammer 40k, the primary events are set in the 41st millennium, but the actual story started in the 29th millennium. But the Emperor's story goes back even further and starts 37,000 years before that, in the 8th millennium BCE, or before the Common Era. It's technically the same as before Christ, but remains more secular in nature. According to the original lore, the origins of the God Emperor of Mankind are shrouded in mystery, which only gets more pronounced in the new origin. According to the lore, the Emperor is no ordinary being, but a collective reincarnation of the ancient shamans of Neolithic humanity. Yes, the the actual Neolithic period where man had started using stones as weapons and tools. The first human psychers harnessed incredible psychic powers and lived in an age where the forces of chaos were still taking shape in the warp. Now, this raises two questions. Who are psychers and what the hell are the forces of chaos? So, psychers are present in almost all intelligent species, including humans. These beings can tap into the psychic energy from another realm called the Realm of Chaos, or the Warp, which is a place made entirely of pure psychic energy. However, psychers often often find themselves vulnerable to ruinous entities called Chaos Gods from the Warp, who seek to corrupt the Psychers and all intelligent beings as a whole. In fact, the Chaos Gods want to put an end to all lives across the galaxy. Anyways, as time passes and humanity's collective psyche grew more turbulent, the once immortal shamans faced a dire fate. Their ability to reincarnate into new bodies dwindled, and their souls were devoured by the malevolent entities lurking in the Warp, which is also called Immaterium. Yes, Warhammer 40k has a lot of names for the same things or people. Anyways, the survival of humanity hung by a thread as the shaman's extinction would leave them vulnerable to the terrors of chaos. In an ultimate act of sacrifice and desperation, the remaining shamans united in a grand conclave to devise a solution. Their audacious and almost crazy plan was to merge their psychic energies into a single soul, birthing the concept of the new man. So, they ingested poison as one, giving their lives to create a singular, powerful being. Born through the amalgamation of all their souls, someone who had the knowledge and experiences of all of them. Fast forward to a standard year later, in a quaint Neolithic settlement in Anatolia, modern day Turkey, a child was born to ordinary parents. Reminds you of someone biblical, doesn't it? Little did they know, this child was destined for greatness. Endowed with astounding psychic power, the infant's genome and physiology were transformed in the womb, rendering him immortal and impervious to the demonic creatures of the Immaterium. As the child grew, his incredible psychic abilities began to manifest setting the stage for an extraordinary destiny that would shape the fate of humanity in the Warhammer 40k universe. However, this was more or less the Emperor's old origin, which is not deemed canonical, but its traces can be found in the new origin as well. Official lore now dismisses the previous accounts as largely apocryphal, leaving the Emperor's history before unifying Terra shrouded in mystery. What's Terra? Well, Terra is the birthplace of humanity and the capital of the Imperium of Man in the Warhammer 40k universe. It is located in the Soul System, which is the home 
home system of our own planet in the real world. The name Terra is simply the Latin word for Earth, and it is used to emphasize the importance and symbolic significance of the planet in the lore. Coming back to the Emperor, he first enters the annals of Warhammer 40k history when he united Terra in the tumultuous 30th millennium, putting an end to the Age of Strife. This was a 5,000 year period starting in the 25th millennium, when Earth was plagued by a host of terrible tragedies, including, but not limited to, isolation, constant warfare, disease, rampant mutation, and famine. It ended with the creation of the Imperium of Man, a galaxy-wide empire set up by the Emperor. According to Horus, the Emperor's birth was in the 8th millennium BCE in a humble Neolithic village along the Sekara River in Anatolia. From a young age, his extraordinary psychic talents emerged, revealing glimpses of his past lives and their accumulated wisdom. An event that shaped his destiny was when his father fell victim to his own brother's treachery. Using his telekinetic power, the young prodigy ended his uncle's life, setting into motion his realization that humanity needed guidance and order to reach its full potential. However, the Emperor did not feel malice or happiness while committing the murder. He felt like it was something that needed to be done, so he did it. Before his rise to power, the Emperor belonged to a remarkable group known as Perpetuals. These were beings blessed with effective immortality thanks to their accelerated cellular regeneration. Now, if this was something that the Emperor developed over time, or if he had accelerated cellular regeneration since birth, is unknown. Before we go forward, let me just briefly explain who Horus is and what the Horus Heresy was. Originally, Horus was one of the 20 Primarchs, genetically engineered superhuman beings created by the Emperor to lead his armies and conquer the galaxy during the Great Crusade. As the favored son of the Emperor, Horus was charismatic, skilled in combat, and a brilliant tactician, making him the War Master and the de facto leader of the Defense Forces. However, tragedy struck when Horus fell victim to the corrupting influence of the Chaos Gods, particularly the Chaos God of Deception and Betrayal, known as Chaos Undivided. Manipulated by these ruinous powers, Horus rebelled against the Emperor, leading to a catastrophic civil war known as the Horus Heresy. The Horus Heresy tore through the Imperium, pitting brother against brother and Primarch against Primarch. The War Master's betrayal and the betrayal of other Primarchs loyal to him resulted in immense bloodshed, with entire legions of Space Marines turning to the service of Chaos. The climactic battle between Horus and the Emperor took place around the vengeful spirit, Horus's flagship, where the Emperor sought to end the rebellion and save humanity from the grip of Chaos. The Emperor emerged victorious, but not without grave consequences. Mortally wounded, the Emperor was forced to sacrifice himself to save what remained of humanity, ultimately ascending to the Golden Throne. I'll explain exactly how this works in a bit. How did the Emperor craft 20 individual superhuman genomes? So, I mentioned that the Emperor brought peace, prosperity, and tranquility to Earth, but how did he do that? Well, there was something called the Unification Wars that the Emperor organized and won. It was fought to bring all the warring factions of Terra under one unified rule, that of the Emperor. Before the Unification Wars erupted in the 30th millennium, the Emperor embarked on a massive scientific endeavor to create 20 individual superhuman genomes known as the Primarchs. The exact genesis of these genetically enhanced beings has been lost to time. What we do know is that the Emperor used his own arcane perpetual genetic code as a foundation for the pure, undifferentiated Primarch gene stock template. This served as the bedrock from which the 20 distinct genetic templates were crafted, each destined to become a truly formidable and awe-inspiring Primarch. But it wasn't just genetic manipulation at play. Modern Imperial scholars believe the Emperor harnessed the powers of psychic sorcery drawn from the chaotic warp to give his gene sons extraordinary abilities. But how exactly did the Emperor achieve such amazing feats? I mean, yes, he was probably the most intelligent and knowledgeable being there was, but creating the Primarchs the way he did was something truly novel, or should I say alien. So here lies a fascinating twist in the Emperor's own journey to the world of Molech during the Age of Technology. He entered a secret warp gate and bargained with the powers of the Immaterium, gaining new knowledge and techniques essential for the creation of his Primarchs. The Primarchs were not only physically engineered, but also spiritually crafted, which explains their magnetic allure and extraordinary personal charm and charisma. However, this also made them susceptible to the malevolent grasp of Chaos, their souls shining like beacons in the Immaterium, attracting demonic entities like Moss to a flame. In a desperate bid to protect his gene sons from the clutches of Chaos, the Emperor inscribed glyphs on their gestation capsules and constructed the most potent Geller field to share the gene vault beneath the Imperial Palace in the Himalayan mountains. Alas, even with such precautions, the Chaos Gods caught wind of the Primarch project and sought to thwart the Emperor's grand design. They had no intention of allowing a new order of reason and progress to challenge their dominion over the galaxy's human-settled worlds. Could the Emperor of Mankind stop time? 
the Emperor of Mankind is surrounded by tales of unimaginable power. While the question of whether the Emperor can manipulate time does not have a right or wrong answer, there are instances in the lore that suggest he possesses the ability to manipulate the very fabric of time. In a passage from the Inquisition Wars novels, the Emperor's exceptional psychic power is shown when he confronts intruders in his chamber. Through an eerie silver power, time itself seems to bow to his will, as if he becomes a conductor of temporal energy. The time stream is negated, and the characters find themselves momentarily frozen in a suspended reality. Some psychers of the highest order can indeed distort time, and though the Emperor has not demonstrated this ability before, in this instance, he seems quite adept at bending the fabric of time. The Emperor's control over time extends beyond mere manipulation. He can also sense the presence of individuals observing him through time travel. His heightened awareness and mastery of the warp grant him unparalleled insight into temporal disruptions. While the full extent of the Emperor's temporal abilities remains largely unknown, it is clear that his incredible psychic might opens possibilities beyond mortal comprehension. Whether through sheer will or the power of the warp, the Emperor's ability to manipulate time does put the God in God Emperor. How powerful are the psychic powers of the Emperor of Mankind? As a psyker of immeasurable level, he harnesses the raw energies of the warp, giving him abilities that defy comprehension. While a base psyker can manipulate minds and control elements, the Emperor's powers go far beyond the ordinary. Imagine the might of an Alpha Plus psyker like the Emperor, capable of turning a mere mortal inside out with a single glance, or effortlessly snapping a colossal battle titan in half with a flick of his wrist. A mere syllable from his lips could send armies into a frenzy of bloodlust, changing the course of battles and entire worlds. But that's just the beginning. His psychic mastery knows no bounds. The Emperor's power is so colossal that it defies all grading systems. From what we know, he has never unleashed his full potential. But even then, his might was unmistakable during the tumultuous Horus Heresy. Witness the awe-inspiring display as he released a psychic wave so vast that it banished demons from Terra, obliterated Horus's very soul, and delivered a severe blow to the malevolent chaos gods across the warp. How did he become God Emperor? In an epic twist of fate that would make even the most seasoned sci-fi fan gasp, the Emperor of Mankind found himself entangled in a paradox of belief, one he fought so hard to avoid. Long before the Horus Heresy shook the galaxy, the Emperor was already being hailed as a living deity. According to the Primarch Lorgar of the World Bearers Legion and his work called the Lectidio Divinitatis, the Emperor wasn't just your regular old mortal, nope, he was a god incarnate. The Lectidio Divinitatis laid down the reasons why this larger than life figure couldn't possibly be a mere man. From uniting the wild techno-barbarian tribes of Terra to reuniting galaxies under his rule, the Emperor's feats were too godly to be chalked up to mere human abilities. The Emperor's bag of tricks didn't end there either. His mind-boggling psychic powers, unparalleled scientific knowledge, and his all-encompassing compassion for humanity were all signs of something godly. I mean, who else could pull off such miracles but a divine being? As the Lectidio Divinitatis gained traction, a frenzy of Emperor worship cults sprouted up like cosmic mushrooms. The imperial truth, which strictly forbade worshipping the Emperor as a god, couldn't stop the fervor. In fact, the Emperor himself had decreed that he should not be worshipped as a god. Those who dared to bow before their supposed deity were in for some serious trouble. But you know how cultists and extremists are. And oh boy did this all lead to one colossal mess for Lorgar and his world bearers. The Emperor's disapproval led to their downfall in the world of Kerr, and they went all in with the Chaos Gods instead. Now that that's what you call a dramatic twist in the tale. Anyway, despite Lorgar's shift toward the dark side, many men and women turned to the Emperor as a beacon of hope and strength to navigate the horrors of that time. And their faith wasn't in vain. The Emperor's devout followers discovered they could wield his power to protect themselves and others from the twisted daemons of the warp. And this fueled the fire of this newfound religion. Having said that, not everyone jumped on the Emperor worship bandwagon. The Space Marines, who have a pretty epic lineage to the Emperor, kept their distance from the whole god thing. Instead, they revered him as the ultimate pinnacle of human potential, a role model to emulate. Their refusal to worship the Emperor as a god led to some epic clashes with the Ecclesiarchy and the Inquisition. As the dust settled after the Horus Heresy, the Emperor's shattered form was entombed in the cybernetic wonders of the Golden Throne. But don't think for a moment that his influence waned. Small cults of Emperor lovers joined forces to create the mighty Imperial Cult. 
trillions of believers across the stars bowed down to the one true god of humanity, the God Emperor. His will was executed by the High Lords of Terra, his laws enforced by the Adeptus Arbites, and his palace was protected by the mighty Adeptus Custodes. The Adeptus Astartes stood tall, defending the Imperium with fervor, while the Inquisition played a game of cat and mouse with the Emperor's enemies, both within and beyond the Imperium. Can the Emperor recover from any and all physical wounds? Alright, so I mentioned a few minutes ago that the Emperor of Mankind has literally incredible regenerative powers. This guy's so much more than your average superhero when it comes to powers, and his regenerative abilities are no different. As a perpetual, he is part of a rare breed of humans with an insane ability to bounce back from any injury, ailment, or even death. Something that puts the likes of Deadpool and Wolverine to shame. I mean, you name it. Dismemberment, suffocation, even being zapped by some wicked energy blast, nothing keeps the Emperor down. Well, almost nothing. His cells regenerate at a superhuman rate, making him virtually indestructible. Unlike the long-lived Primarchs and Space Marines, this dude is truly ageless, rocking a body that defies time itself. Over 38,000 years old and still looking fresh. Maybe Tom Cruise shares a strand of his DNA, or at least the same plastic surgeon. With a physique two to three times larger than your average human, and strength that would give a thousand Herculeses a run for their money, the Emperor's physical power is a force to be reckoned with. His extraordinary might also got passed down to his gene sons and the space marines. But there's a small catch to all this indestructibility and invulnerability. It's called the Golden Throne. No, it's not some righteous sibling of the Iron Throne. This legendary seat of power is the key to unleashing the Emperor's mind-blowing psychic power. It's like the mother of all life support systems and psychic amplifiers combined. Through the throne, he fuels the Astronomicon, which can be compared to a super cosmic GPS for the Imperium. The throne also protects the Imperial Palace and holds shut a gnarly tear in the webway that can spew demons like water from a broken dam. But here's where things get dicey. The throne's power drain is off the charts. We're talking innumerable nuclear reactor levels of energy consumption. Even a powerful psyker like Malkador the Sigilite got reduced to dust by its mind-boggling strain. So, while the Emperor can heal from his wounds, the constant demand of power from the throne keeps him from fully recovering. So, he's basically stuck in a cosmic tug-of-war between life and power. Furthermore, the Emperor is a man on a mission, and he knows his Imperium ain't all sunshine and rainbows. He fears that if he ever stops powering the Astronomicon and sealing the gnarly webway tear, the Imperium's toast as the evil forces will spare no time wrecking humanity. And to be honest, he's not exactly thrilled with the way things turned out during his 10,000 year rule. So yeah, he has to sit on the throne and let it consume him, but it's because of his immense regenerative abilities that he's not being turned to dust. How powerful is the Emperor of Mankind? So it must be quite evident by now that the God Emperor of Mankind is nothing short of a god in the truest sense of the term. First off, let's talk energy attacks. We're talking blasts that make supernovas look like child's play. This dude can unleash laser-like precision or wide-beam devastation and just about anything else. But what good is the use of energy if you only use it for the offense? The Emperor's got some serious energy shields, making him virtually indestructible. So basically, no amount of physical punishment is really punishment for him. Then there's the dazzling radiance of what they call his golden light. One look at it, and even mighty warriors like Horus are brought to their knees. In fact, looking at his face can send even the toughest space marines spiraling into insanity, such as the radiance on his face. Furthermore, he's got this thing called Lay on Hands. Just a touch from him and he can restore people, or machines, back to full health. So he's a bit of a cosmic healer as well, and not just the harbinger of destruction. Apart from this, he's got his precognition and clairvoyance. The big guy can see into the future and make genius level tactical moves before any anybody knows what hit him. He can even grant immortality and abilities to individuals like it's nobody's business. But of course, he can leave you bereft of your own powers and do some good old soul sucking as well. If you thought that was it, well, the Emperor is a serious technopath as well. He can manipulate and control any form of technology with ease. Plus, his Terminator armor is like a fortress of invincibility. He can punch a planet into fragments and shake a moon-sized ship like a ragdoll. Oh, and did I mention he's faster than a universe-traveling dragon? Is he immortal? Why is he neither fully living nor wholly dead? After the final battle, the shattered and wounded body of the Emperor was discovered on a ship's bridge by Rogel Dorn, a Primarch. Following the Emperor's cryptic instructions, Dorn oversaw his internment within the Golden Throne. Now, the Imperial cult, after becoming the official religion of the Imperium, claimed that the Emperor's internment was no mere defeat, but rather an ascension, a grand sacrifice to transcend the physical realm and take his place as the one true god of mankind in the image 
materia, but here's the kicker. The Emperor is stuck in a mind-bending limbo, neither fully alive nor truly dead. The Golden Throne, originally intended to tap into the webway, now acts as a lifeline for the Emperor's crumbling form and as a conduit for his immense psychic power. Having said that, his psychic essence spans across the entire galaxy through the warp, watching over his beloved humanity and fending off the malevolent forces of chaos. So why does the Emperor choose such a life? Well, his sheer love for humanity is what prevents him from embracing the very sweet release of death. You see, the Emperor's survival is paramount to the very fabric of the Imperium. Marvelous Verdict In conclusion, the Emperor of Mankind, revered as the perfect human and savior of humanity, is a far more complex and flawed figure than his worshippers could ever imagine. Behind the facade of wisdom and protection lies a fervently atheist ruler, determined to eradicate all forms of faith and superstition in his quest for a utopian society of science and reason. His intellect and arrogance led him to believe that his will was absolute and unquestionable, and he wielded his power without restraint, even if it meant crushing entire cultures and alien species that stood in his way. His vision for humanity's advancement knew no bounds, and he believed that every action he took, no matter how questionable, was for the betterment of his race. However, his fatal flaw turned out to be his own hubris. The Emperor's arrogance led him to underestimate the true power of the ruinous powers in the Immaterium, the very entities he sought to starve out by suppressing religion. His plan, while well, well-intentioned, ultimately proved flawed as the Chaos Gods draw strength not only from worship, but from raw emotions as well. Even if he succeeded in eradicating all faiths, the shadow of the Chaos Gods would still loom over the material world, fueled by the collective consciousness and emotions of all living beings. So, while the Emperor's legacy as a powerful and wise leader cannot be denied, there is much to be learned from his story. That's all for today, but if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Thanks for watching, stay safe out there, and have a marvelous day!